Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about all different types of data partitions that you would hear when you talk about Spark. So we would look at input partitions, output partitions and shuffle partitions. It is important to understand these three because they are very fundamental to understanding Spark architecture or how Spark works. So let's get started. First of all, what is an input partition? So whenever we submit a job uh, in Spark and in the previous videos, we have seen what is a job, stage, task, etc. So when a job is submitted for processing, each data partition that is sent to an executor, because ultimately, who are the workhorses? The executors. So they are the ones who are actually executing a task. So in the partition of data, it's a, or a logical chunk of data that is sent to specific executors and each executor will process a partition at one time. So that is an input partition. Whenever a job is submitted, the data on which your job is supposed to act on is actually divided into smaller chunks and sent to each of the executors. On an executor, there can be multiple tasks running depending on how many number of cores are there, but one partition would be allocated to one executor. Okay. So the time that it takes for each executor to process data is directly proportional to the size and the number of partitions. So at one time, the executor will operate on one partition. But how much time would executor take for execution really depends upon uh, the size of that partition and the number of partitions that that executor will execute. If there are more number of partitions, the more work will be distributed across executors and there uh, so what it means is basically processing will be done faster and in a larger chunk if there are fewer partitions if there are too many partitions obviously they have to be sent to different executors and there will be shuffling of data and we have spoken about this many times that the best way to make your jobs performance efficient is to reduce the number of shuffles or to reduce the amount of data that is getting shuffled across the network. So if you have too many um, shuffles, essentially if you have too many input partitions, there will be a number of shuffles and the performance would not be that good. So input partition is a very, very critical parameter to consider for any job. Now, since in input partition is a critical parameter for performance, what should influence or how should we influence that size of the partition? So there is a property in Spark called Spark SQL Files Max Partition Bytes. This can actually control the number of the bytes that are getting packed into a single partition. And if you want to check the number of partitions, it, you can do it by the method get number of partitions. Now these two are important so you can check how many partitions by default it is creating and then you can set the value and check again how many partitions are getting created because we want to control this because we don't want too much of data shuffling around. The number of partitions will actually determine how much data is getting shuffled around because each partition would be sent to an executor. Now coming on to the next important partition what is output partition. Now when we are reading or retrieving data for further processing, we would definitely need an output partitions. Okay. Now if there are several partitions, then the data will be scattered within multiple files. So basically when, when, whenever your job has completed and you are writing back the data, at that time your output partition determines how many files would get returned to your disk. Now, if there are several partitions, that means that there will be so many number of files, the number of partitions that are there for output that will determine how many files are getting created. So if you are storing, let's say saving data, which is output from a job and the, the output partition number is high, so you will have multiple files. Now, if that data is getting further consumed in some other query, let's say you are doing uh, select on that particular table or you are doing some queries, it is going to render those many files. So again, your input partition or the way your query is reading data will get influenced. So which means that your output partition and input partition are somewhat related. Also, your memory utilization will be more 
while processing the metadata table as it contains several partitions so basically the output part partition is influencing the way you are writing back the data after a job is done into the disk and it will determine how many files are getting written to the disk so obviously this will also affect the performance of your job because you are writing those many number of files and your subsequent queries are going to read those many number of files also your memory utilization is high because you are chunking into multiple files and there is a metadata involved while doing this operation and that is also influencing your performance so output partition is also a very critical parameter when we think about spark jobs now how do you influence the output partition uh, this is one of the very famous um, questions that gets asked in interviews also what is repartition what is coalesce so these are the two methods that can influence the way your data is getting written or the output is getting written okay so maybe let's quickly look at what does repartition do versus what does coalesce do so repartition partitioning the repartitioning is one of the ways to influence your output partition and this basically can reduce or increase the number of partitions which means how much data you are writing back to the disk and in how many partitions that can be influenced by repartition now this is an extremely expensive operation because when you call this method on your data set it is going to shuffle or redistribute the entire data across the network and when this operation is performed your data will be serialized move and then deserialized so this takes a lot of time and the reason being that re why repartition is expensive is because repartition is actually shuffling the entire data as you can see repartition can increase or decrease the number of partitions and it tries to make equal sized partitions to do that it has to definitely move around a lot of data so repartition is done in cases where you want to uh, kind of increase the number of partitions but uh, and distribute the data uniformly but it is expensive the second alternative to this is coalesce now this operation what is does is it tries to use the existing partition and can reduce the number of partitions it can never increase the number of partitions because it is not doing a entire shuffle of the data it tries to keep the number of partitions the same uh same or lesser than what it is currently and rearrange the data so it can have the flip side of it is that coalesce may have unequal size partitions because it is not redistributing the whole data so it can't equally partition it whereas repartition method could equally partition data because it was reshuffling the entire data it could also increase the number of partitions here coalesce cannot do that but it is much more efficient um or takes lesser time as compared to repartition so these are the two ways that you can influence the number of files that are getting output uh, written out from a job by using these two methods and you can suggest the number of partitions as well now coming to the third partition so we spoke about input partitions we spoke about output there is something called shuffle partition as well so when will this come into picture like i said the most costly operation for any distributed system and for technologies like spark it is uh, the wider transformations or transformations where data is getting shuffled across the network those are the most expensive one and whenever we talk about performance optimization our goal is to minimize the data shuffle in on the network so whenever there are wide transformations where data is required from other partitions <clears throat> spark will perform a data shuffle and you cannot completely avoid this situations because when you do transformations you do joins you will definitely have shuffles but you can look at how to reduce <clears throat> the amount of data that is getting shuffled now why transformation will use shuffle partitions to shuffle data whenever there is shuffling this shuffle partition parameter can influence that how many partitions are you creating a default number which is set by spark is 200 so irrespective of whatever is your data size the number of or the number of executors the number of partition is 200 but how you can influence this is by setting the parameter spark seek dot sequel dot shuffle dot partitions you can set that to increase or reduce this 
number when a, when the shuffle happen so we spoke about that shuffle will happen during query execution and wide transformations wide means anything that involves lot of data which will be then shuffled back and forth on the network so any kind of operations like join union group by key reduce by key there are many more but just these are just few examples this will definitely cause shuffle and as i said shuffle cannot be made to zero but we can definitely think about optimizing our job and reducing that shuffle amount of data shuffled so how will we understand how to set, set the shuffle partition so when our data is small then the number of partition should be reduced it should not be 200 we know that our data is small if it is 200 what will happen is there are too many partitions getting created so each partition will have very less data if your data is 1 gb and you divide it by 200 so you are definitely creating small 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 partitions and 200 of them so it will result in creating too many tasks whereas the data is very less so in that case your shuffle partition should be set to a much lower number than 200 when the data size is huge that means you are having higher number for the shuffle partition so you don't need to necessarily have 200 partitions you can increase that so that each partition has significant data and your number of partitions also increases this may improve the query execution time now there is no hard and fast rule or formula to say this should be your shuffle partition size it is a titration so you have to set the values look at the dag look at the logs and all those uh, to this you can look at the spark ui to see how much data is getting shuffled and then do this titration to see what is the optimum value but you should always keep in mind when working with spark that these are the three different types of part data partitions input output and shuffle that are critical to understand because that is how you can performance optimize your jobs so i hope this has helped you to get a quick snapshot of what these data partitions are and what are the factors influencing them so thanks for watching the video please keep liking sharing and subscribing to the channel for more interesting videos thank you